Christ's Letters Continuation of Letter 4 Some have been born with great willpower, others with less. But the moment that a person fully realizes that all willpower has been drawn from universal consciousness and willpower can be increased by calling on one's source of being for increased willpower, so does the person begin to realize that willpower is not limited after all. It can be drawn, according to the magnitude and strength of one's faith, from universal consciousness itself. Each and every one of each gender, every race, nation, religion, every level of resources and income, from pauper to king, is equally important in the moment of now, in the moment of end of day. True differences only arise from what each person gives of himself to this moment, the next moment, and the rest of the day. A king or prime minister can be remembered for his goodness, the benefits he brought his country, or for the, mis or for the misery he imposed on the people. Similarly, a man born into an impoverished family who may, have not developed, who may not have developed his abilities to any high level, but who gave his all in his service to his environment, will eventually be as revered by kin and friends, and in the next life reap of his sowing as does the king or prime minister. Such a person will have contributed life to his environment because the nature of life force is unconditional love and service, work and harmony, giving whatever is necessary for the fulfillment of the needs of another. If each day your life force is spent, is spent in just giving a cup of tea to people who are sick, then let that life force be spent in its highest form, as eager willingness to walk to the patient with a warm smile and hand over the tea with kindness, goodwill, and a desire for the healing of the person. In such a way, a tea giver can become a radiant medium of healing and upliftment. The more frequently the tea giver calls silently, for an inflow of divine consciousness into her own consciousness, the greater and more penetrating will be her radiated life force to the patient. The sick person may not be aware of what is happening, but a room of sick people attended by such a tea giver or carer will recover more swiftly than those who receive their tea from one who hands it to them without a glance of recognition without a word, without a kindly thought. No, each job, each co co moment can be sacred and beautiful, radiant with the inflow of divine consciousness, life force, uplifting, healing to the self and others. If a person takes time to realize he or she is a channel of divine consciousness, which is itself all healing, all protection, all fulfillment of a person's every need. One person, even one who cleans the floors and empties bedpans, possessing such a realization can enter a room and become the most important, perhaps the only, distributor of good amongst six people handing out bedpans. Such a person can leave behind a legacy of increased strength in every patient. Every single person who realizes that from their eyes is radiated potent life force to those at whom the vision is directed can know that their glance, that penetrating look, that smiling gaze has benefited the one who received it. For everything we Yes, you and I, the Christ, think and do is an act of consciousness, and consciousness is life force. With the activity of our minds, yours and mine, we shape our consciousness, our life force into different forms 
which will bless or curse the environment. The only difference between you and Muhammad and myself, known on earth as Jesus, is the kind of thought and feeling that Muhammad and I radiate to others. We both radiate life-giving consciousness energy to the world. What are you radiating in your world? Remember again how, during a time of great stress, during my time in Palestine, I cursed the fig tree and it shriveled to its roots. Not long afterwards, I was also roundly cursed by Roman soldiers and Jewish priests alike. I too was shriveled to my roots before I died on the cross. Beware what you hand out to others. Make certain that you would like to receive the same. A cup of water handed to someone with love can bless and uplift that person or, if handed out with ill feeling, can make the recipient feel small and of no account, a little weaker and more depressed. What part are you playing in your environment? Are you honored and recognized for the love and goodwill you distribute the moment you set foot in your workplace? Have you caught a vision of what is really important in life? Have you set yourself a spiritual plan, a spiritual goal to be achieved before you pass on into the next beautiful dimension? Will you be sufficiently purified and committed to unconditional loving to move into the higher levels of spiritual consciousness? Or will your goals still be of those your earth, still be of those of your earth plane? Ask yourself, what part do you really want to play in your environment? What is your spiritual destination? Just as importantly, what are your attitudes towards other people? Superiority and exclusivity? Or an awareness that most people are doing the best they can with whatever talents they possess? To reach your full potential, you must realize that neither position nor wealth can limit the power you exercise in the world. Your only limitations are your attitudes and thoughts arising from your attitudes. The life force radiated from the mind of a king, prime minister, general, or lowly servant or soldier is equally powerful and productive of good in the environment, providing each one disciplines his thoughts to become attuned to the spiritual frequencies of unconditional love and divine consciousness. Furthermore, such thoughts entered, enter and enhance the world consciousness force itself. Each person adding their spiritual thought to world spiritual thought strengthens it. The only factor which determines the degree of imparting of life or sickness propensities is the level of realization and spiritual understanding that a person has drawn from the source of being. Therefore, the man who happily removes the neighborhood refuse with a good heart and a blessing on all whom he meets, is a bright light shining in his little world. And the money-grasping, ill-tempered man of wealth and substance emerging from his mansion to go to his office is a pool of darkness which can be felt negatively by those who venture near him. No matter what you do, what you possess, the position you occupy in life, there is no limit to your potential development for good. There is no limit to the potential grandeur and glory of your being. Your only limitation is the amount of time and energy you are prepared to devote to meditating on your source of being and opening your human consciousness to enter into it and receive it into your mind. Therefore, religious leaders revere your congregations because you do not know what spiritual insight and progress is taking place in the minds of those who may appear to be very humble and of no account socially. Religious leaders seize your criticism of other religions 
because you do not know the heights of spiritual knowledge, insight, and enlightenment their adherents may have attained. Religious leaders realize that you, yourselves, are only as spiritually advanced as is your personal perception of reality. If you have no perception of what lies be beyond the veil of your material world, you may be religious, but you do not have a spiritual consciousness. This is the true ideal, the true aspiration, the highest goal, to understand and experience the reality behind and within all things, giving them their individual being. You may call the reality God, Jehovah, Allah, Infinite Intelligence, Divine Mind or Divine Consciousness, or the Tao. All these names mean the source of your being, your creative origins. You can have no higher aspiration than this, to understand and experience the reality behind and within all things, giving, maintaining, and sustaining all individual being. This was the goal presented to you by every enlightened teacher who has come to earth. They all shared the same vision, the same realization and understanding. Such teachers were held in high esteem, but few of their followers understood what they were being taught. Each man placed his own interpretation on the teacher's words. Each man's interpretation aroused out out of his personal conditioning and bias. In your personal lives, remember at all times that your thoughts, words, deeds not only have a bearing on your future life, but also affect the people with whom you are relating at any moment. What are you, employer or employee, personally contributing to the successful operation of the business in which you earn your daily bread? be it factory, farm, shop, or professional office? What are you giving to your employees or fellow workers in well-being and good feeling? What are you doing for the entire building? For the building, you may ask in amazement. But I repeat, what are you doing for your building, your vehicles, your entire business venture? Everything, bricks, mortar, steel, glass, paper, metal, tires, engines, and petrol is permeated with the consciousness you exude as you go about your daily affairs. This is the reason why some people leave a trail of destruction behind them because they have an ill-humored, irritable, critical, destructive consciousness, and others keep their possessions intact and looking new for years because they appreciate and cherish them daily. Everything on your earth is the energy of consciousness made visible, be it in the form of solid inanimate matter or living plasma. With your thoughts, you feed or destroy whatever is in your environment. What are you doing to your family, home, and environment? Are you grumbling, denigrating, destructive in thought towards your work and other people? Then rest assured, you are leaving a little trail of destructive consciousness behind you which will help erode all that it penetrates and imbues. If you focus on the desire to love, to accept, to work with gladness in your heart, then everywhere you go, you are shedding a consciousness of strength, blessing, and growth. When I was on earth in Palestine, I was dealing with Orthodox Jews who believed in and upheld codes of conduct so rigid they bordered on cruelty. Their traditional laws were inhibiting, depressing, confining, and ridiculous. I brought to these people a new vision of an eternal father which was both transcendent to themselves and yet everywhere present, ever aware of their needs and of such universal love that they could rest assured it was always the Father's will to fulfill those needs. That's it for today. Thank you. 
I love you.